Rap is not music. Hey everybody, we're building a Spud 2 kit today. I'm really excited. This is my first more formal solder tutorial. And I realized before we could sell these spud kits to you and have you put them together yourselves, you probably needed some kind of instruction to help you out. So it's it feels intimidating if you're just getting into soldering. I know that I was certainly terrified of soldering, and now I, I do it uh, three days a week, eight hours a day at the at a minimum, and then whatever I add on on top of that. But um, been soldering now professionally for I think two years give or take and Waldo with the new line of buffers coming out has released the spud 1 and spud 2 as a DIY kit so you're gonna find uh, resistors there's gonna be three taped together those are the three one megs um, and we're gonna just kinda put these together assemble the board by putting the smallest components on first so here I'm just going through everything, putting the resistors to the side. We'll put that capacitor on there, but we don't want to put that on there because we're going to use the pressure from the top of the board to hold all the components down flat. So let's take a look at our schematic. I had to look to see what R4 is going to be because that's the one unique value. So I found the 100R resistor, which is just a thousand, it says on it, one zero 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 put it into R4 slot after bending both sides. I found my 10K, uh, put it in R5. That has 1002 on it. And then the rest are really easy because they're all one meg. And I think I'm gonna do a separate um, Spud 1 kit tutorial video, but in case that you bought one of those and this is the only one up, you know, you can apply these same principles to your kit just look at the corresponding schematic so once you have all those resistors on there you're gonna flip the board over don't worry none of them should fall out they're all pretty tight and you just kinda put some pressure down to get everything flat and then you come in and you start soldering now I've been speeding up my solder portions for these um, these videos because you guys don't need to see you know uh, I don't know what happened there. Oh, I was focusing. That's what it is. <laughs> I've been speeding up my solder portions of these videos and clearly not editing perfectly. Um, but you don't want to go too hard on a PCB. Uh, you want to aim for a little Hershey Kiss looking joint. And I'm spending you know minimal amounts of time on, on each joint here. Uh, but keep in mind this is sped up to about 300%. So spend about... You know, depending on your iron and your temperature, um, it may it may look different for you. But um, this is something I'm trying to show you here: is when you clip these leads, you don't want to clip right on the contact. You don't want to make that flush because then there's not going to be any solder holding. Don't do that. So give it about a millimeter, two millimeter gap, as you can see. I'm trying to demonstrate here, um, and then you just snip away helps to some of them will go flying if you don't put your finger over them so if you don't want to pick up leads from all the way in the other corner <laughs> I'd suggest trying to hold them down I like to clean up my workbench in between steps um, there's me showing the resistors those are all in that's basically the hardest part now it's just kind of fun uh, I was trying to compare heights between the op amp socket and the capacitor and determined that the op amp socket was going to be the thing to put on next. Um, this one is interesting because it's on the side of the board. So you're going to notice we run into an issue when we flip it over. Uh, you're going to get the board kind of laying on its side. And I was trying to find something the right height. Turns out these capacitors work perfectly. You just want to prop your board up on the other side. Ah, I'm struggling and use the other one and then we got it uh, you want to make it fl flush a uh, parallel with the workspace surface so that those leads are all in there at the same height otherwise you get sort of a lopsided op amp socket and we won't don't want that 
Um, now keep in mind you could solder the op amp directly to the board. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the socket is nice in case there is an op amp failure. That's generally the only part that would ever fail on a buffer. It can just, you know, it happens with a, a, the right kind of electro <laughs> electrostatic uh, pulse or something. But it's very rare. The socket just ensures it's easier to change in case something goes goes wrong. Uh, now pay attention to the key on that op amp. It goes in basically upside down. Um, there's a little dot and it goes in the bottom right corner if you're looking up at the buffer with the wires north. Then we just put this capacitor in here. It's uh, not polarized so you can just drop it in. The nice thing about um, this buffer is that other than the op amp, none of the components are polarized. So I guess the op amp, I don't know if polarized is the right word, but there's a there's a right way to put it in. Then we drop these O two two capacitors in. I think it might be O O two two. Just easy. Solder those in. Clip the leads. And you might have noticed I clipped the op amp socket leads a little bit, but you really don't have to clip those. They're, I'm just, don't clip anything if you're taking away the solder joint. I'm just taking away a little bit of excess. Uh, and then we have something that's resembling a buffer. Hey, looks real similar. Okay, so now we gotta put some wires in. It's uh, some people's least favorite part. I no longer hate it. I've done it enough where I just got over hating stripping and tinning. Uh, but you, you gotta strip and tin just about every wire if you use stranded wire. Some people use the pre tin stuff and that's cool. I think I have a, some of that. Just needs a quick little, if you never tend to wire before, if you're new to soldering, just kind of brush on it real quick and get a little bit of solder. You don't wanna get it clumpy because then it's gonna be hard to put in. Uh, now Waldo puts his wires in through the front on the spuds. Uh, I decided for this one, I would put them in through the bottom and solder from the top just so it looked clean. Uh, so we're going to solder the yellow to the out, solder the blue to the in, and then we'll get our... I didn't have black wire, so I had to use green for our ground, and I used red for our power. Now you want to clip your wire leads that are coming out of the top of the board. If you choose to do it that way, you can totally drop them in and flip the board. Uh, now here's what is often overlooked and very important. Do a little final inspection on your own own work. You deserve it. Uh, you worked hard to build it. You don't want any mistakes on there. And it should look clean. It shouldn't have a bunch of goop on there, but if it does, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, just make sure all those joints work. We'll see you next time.